Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Mojo Market Report right here on a football Friday. It's week 16. I hope you guys enjoyed Thursday night football between the Jaguars and the Jets. We can't actually talk about that game because we are doing this a day early. Uh, full transparency here in the Mojo Market. We like to give that. We did the same thing for Thanksgiving, so it's not end-all, be-all, but... Rest assured, if anything happens on the Mojo Market of significance between now and Friday, we'll cover it. Don't you worry about that. We will be here. So we have ourselves, myself, Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci, and of course, A5, Anthony behind the glass. We hope you guys are doing well out there. Hope you're getting your last minute Christmas shopping done. If you're doing that right now, shame on you. Uh, there is, Anthony said it right before the show. He's like, ah, I got to go Christmas. I'm like, I haven't even done you my, do too. Like, I haven't what even are we done doing my here? first minute Christmas shopping. You yet, guys so are I'm doing awful. my first minute and last minute all in one. I just, awful. This is what There's happens. There's nothing bro. worse than, than going to the mall or anywhere. Now, like the day before thank, uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah, no, I agree. I find nothing worse than going to the mall, period. Right. So why would you wait? Like I'm an in and out you act guy. As if we own a I'm business an and we're busy. I'm an in and out guy. <laughs> I will be in and out. Hopefully. I talked to your girlfriend yesterday. She's I was like, I was Marshall's. She got did a lap. <laughs> Like in and out of there. Come on. Well, um, yeah. So yeah. nobody wants Wait to go until to these I'm places. at Marshalls with her, and then you know I'm looking for a bench <laughs> right. to sit on for four hours. Just give me a break. In and out. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. In and out. The, the, the in and out to them is like four and a half hours. Um, anyway, we have a lot of uh, games to get to this week. It is week number sixteen in the NFL. It is the playoff push is here. There's only a couple more weeks to do it. There's some games on this docket this week that are very very prominent to those playoff pushes and we start with the new york football giants visiting the minnesota vikings now the vikings coming off this improbable you know best biggest comeback in nfl history um that's a recipe for disaster right off the rip i think is a lot of emotion went into that game last week they got a giants team right now who hasn't clinched a playoff spot yet but are on the verge of doing so i think if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong I think they can do it this week with a win and like one loss somewhere. I feel like they Washington can, or Seattle. I, I think they can do it teams. with a Green Bay loss, no matter what. Um, because they don't have the tiebreaker over Detroit, Seattle, so they have uh, to have Detroit Seattle them, lose. Yeah, no, no, they they need to. They win need games. to win and some help, but they're right there. So when a Mojo Market's concerned, and who you know the plays that you might want to make on Sunday and Saturday, because there's both two two days worth of football coming up, which is glorious, though I, I think um, there's a couple plays that I want to. Just get off my chest right away. We talked about it yesterday as far as the running back situation for the New York Giants and what they should be doing in 2023. I think Saquon Barkley has himself a decent day. But if you're looking at how to attack the Vikings, Chris, I think it's through the air. I think Daniel Jones shines. And if you want to make a play on Daniel Jones, do that. But I think, like, is it Richie James, right? He's the guy, to me, that's like the unsung, like, we have Ant do all the stats, right? And there's not one thing right here on Richie James. Why? Because there shouldn't be, right? But this is the day that I think he does well, and I think he racks up a lot of catches. And I think that's the, the key to success for the Giants this week. Yeah, well, look, I, I understand what you're saying, and the, the Vikings aren't really a good uh, pass defense. But the Giants They're have— letting up almost 300 games. I think the Giants— Yeah, <laughs> but they haven't played the Giants— the Giants don't <laughs> throw. Get right game right? for them. I, I understand. Daniel Jones sitting at 26, 20, almost 2,700 yards. It's not terrible, but it's not great in terms of today's NFL standard. Um, I don't think they're going to try to throw the ball as much. They have to in third downs, but it's going to be run the ball. You got to stick to what's gotten you to this point. Um, Saquon was the, the heart and soul all season long. The Minnesota Vikings, while they give up pass yards, they've given up 500 yards a game. So mm. if they're giving up 300 yards on the in the air, That's that true. means that they're giving up a ton of rush yards as well. I think there's going to be openings for Saquon. There, there may be some more openings for some big plays because that secondary can't tackle either. But I still think with, with the Giants have to stick to what they, they're good at, and Daniel Jones isn't good at throwing the ball all over the field. He only has, what, 12 touchdowns this year? Uh, yes. So it's not much. They're not a passing team. I don't, I don't expect them to be one. Um, but in the in the case of the Minnesota Vikings, the Giants also don't play really that great defense. I was going to say flip side of the coin. Are they're, you slapping multipliers on on the the primo guys like your Justin Jefferson? They're middle the of the pack. Well, two things, two sides of this. I'll get into the, the the Vikings offense in a second. But because the Vikings offense tends to score a ton of points in bunches, we saw them put up thirty six points or thirty nine points in, like in the second seconds, half yesterday yeah. uh, last week. 
the Giants may be forced to throw the ball more than they'd like because Truth. if they give up points early and they fall behind, you know how that goes in today's NFL. Mm. Um, second half might be Daniel Jones with 25 attempts in that game. Mm. So you could be right. Um I'm not banking on that because I expect the Giants to just stick to what they know and and keep on running the football, keep it close. And if you're a possession or two away, as we've seen with this Giant team, they could come back in the fourth quarter. They've done that Which is crazy times, to me, yeah. as bad as their offense can be Correct. at times. <laughs> um, now, on the flip side of things, with the Vikings, yeah, the Giants, I, th- I feel like they give up a ton of big plays. Justin Jefferson, I mean, I feel like if you're playing Mojo, Justin Jefferson should be one of those stalwarts in your lineup. And I say lineup, I mean your portfolio. How are you not in on the guy? I it's eleven catches and, and two touchdowns on any given Sunday, and in, and especially on this one. So I'm gonna the, I'm gonna ride it on Jefferson. I'm not a fan of Kirk Cousins, so I'm not gonna play him. But you know, Kirk Cousins is undervalued by most. He seems to be one that. of the most underrated players in the league. When you ask people, it's always Kirk Cousins' name popping to the forefront. We've seen it on the Mojo social media. Is overrated, underrated. Kirk Cousins is always on the underrated. I, you're right. All those interviews are are finally starting to really peek their heads where we need them to. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, and, and obviously, Dalvin Cook has gotten going. So any of those big three, I guess you could play with. And I will say, T.J. Hawkinson, the Giants do surrender. A I mean, ton. the Giants haven't been able to cover a tight end since Jason Winton was yeah, the tight end so, for the Cowboys. So take your pick. <laughs> so that's a thing. Whoever you enjoy playing in the Mojo market on the Vikings offense, just take your pick because I feel Plethora. like it's a safe bet. <laughs> All right, switching gears over to another. Somewhat of a playoff scenario for the Green Bay Packers. There is a world we live in where all of a sudden the Packers could be uh, the seven seed. I know it's crazy. They beat up on a bad L.A. Rams team on Monday Night Football this week, so that was good for their morale um, and it's good for Aaron Rodgers and guys that you can really like read it on their face if they're into it or not. A win over the Rams the other night put like that thought back in the, the heads of Packer fans and the Packer players that, hey, listen, if we just do some damage the next two weeks, three weeks, who knows, right? We need a lot of stuff to happen for us, but you never know. Flip side of that coin, the Dolphins are still defrosting right now <laughs> from that that snow game against Buffalo last week. Um, so this is an interesting matchup, considering the fact um, that the Dolphins score points in bunches. They have a phenomenal running game against a bad run defense in Green Bay. Now, I know Cam Akers, guys like that, like they didn't really have their way, have their way, but the chunk runs are still there. Um, susceptible to the run are the Packers' defense. They're secondary. A little better than the run defense. Um, I do like a lot of the Dolphins this week. I do. Being at home, not in the weather. The Packers historically not playing very good in Florida, which is a, a, just a weird thing. I don't know. Anytime the Packers go to Florida, whether it be Miami, Jacksonville, or Tampa Bay, um, either of those three teams, they don't, they don't really show up. But the Packers have something to play for here. But when I look at the Dolphins, I say this running game, could be a thing between Mostert and everybody else they trot out there, but Mostert's the thumper. And, and then, of course, Tua has been, you know, pretty much outside of last week, he's been a lights-out quarterback. Yeah, so there's there's a little bit of an injury uh, situation going on in the Miami backfield. So I think there that, is. That, Mostert, is a, right. that is of benefit to the Packers. Both both running backs are banged up. So Jeff Wilson and Mostert. It's also week 16, um, so yeah. And, and playing into the... Well, the Packers running backs, conversely, are fairly healthy. Let me look at right now what, oh, what is, the is, Dolphins. Um, is Dylan out of concussion protocol, or was yeah, he ever he, in? He is. He, he is. is. He, okay, cool. He got cleared the next day. I, I cost me a fantasy matchup. Honestly, <laughs> I needed a half a point <laughs> at A.J. Dillon, and he got concussed. I but, gave you a half a percentage but, here But I will say market. this. A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones both delivered for me on playoff round one. <laughs> All I will right. say that. Um, in some cases, on the same team. Are you- so I'm looking up right now the Miami Dolphins um, – Run defense, okay. DVOA, and I mean, I think it's been better. Let me look. Yeah, yeah. Miami's defense is is top ten against the run DVOA. Packers offense is top three in DVOA. So that's a very good matchup right there. The Dolphins do well on defense, but the Packers do well on offense. And and on the flip side, I know that the Dolphins will tend to run the ball when there's an opening there, but they are without their poten- potentially without both of their backs. And the Packers have improved on the run defense. Not great, but what the Packers do well is they're sixth in the NFL in past DVOA. Mm-hmm. The Dolphins are second. So the matchups is, the matchups line up for this to be a better game than people would think, considering how the teams have played up to this point. And the Dolphins are, are playing a little bit worse football. Packers are playing a little bit better. So I think it's going to be a good football game. It's going to come down to it. Um, I, like, I like the Packers' offense because there's really unsung guys at the receiver position. 
there's a lot of value in. Oh, we're the, singing them. You know, we've been singing. There's a lot of unsung, value but they've been in, the, in the Romeo Dobbs and the Christian Watson. These these guys are still a little undervalued to me in terms of what I see out of this team week in week out, and where I I know that they're headed in terms of their plans for the future. Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson are a clear buy to me. Um, you could Especially make the case this week. I mean, the Dolphins are giving up two sixty three through the air. You average. could, you so could make the case. I feel like Aaron Jones is one of the most undervalued running backs. You look at his bank value and look at his market future. I think it lines up as to. I know he's got a lot of tread, but right now Aaron Jones coming into this season since two thousand nineteen, there's been two running backs that have had forty touchdowns and four thousand yards, and that was Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones. So. Why isn't he all the way up in the top of the, you know, he's he's sitting there somewhere around top 10. Mm. I'm not even sure where he is, but I know he's lower than he deserves. A lot of Packers to be made money on, and I'm going to fade the Dolphins in this one. I know this is not Homer in me because I've done the opposite. Dave, I'm nowhere near. I'm surprised you had, when I brought up the Packers running backs, I'm surprised you didn't bring up Pollard and Zeke. Oh, we will because we got the Cowboys next. Coming. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I got to say, the Packers are playing for uh, better football. Their playoff hopes are on the line. If they lose, they're done. So there's going to be some playoff desperation there. Even though it's a small smidge, I think the Packers are going to play well. I brag game. about uh, my portfolio being in the green. Chris's portfolio is green, Bay Packers. <laughs> Just everybody on the Packers Look, is on I, his I have, portfolio. I, have, I actually have a player. I actually don't have a player on the Bears. Maybe I could consider Justin Fields, but I just don't like him. I have Justin Jefferson. Okay. Right? I have Jamison Williams. I have Amon Ross St. Brown. Okay, but there's still a lot of players. That's division. A lot of Packers. I have Dobbs, Watson, A.J. Dillon, and Aaron Jones. And I guarantee you sprinkled a little bit on Jordan Love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) God, man, if I know this guy. I don't have to look at his portfolio. I just know it. Uh, But a very good game, nonetheless. It's going to be, again, a a little bit of a barn burner in Miami. So Waiting to invest in Le Fleur. There's coaches. There's so much stuff happening at Mojo that, uh, you know, we are keeping up with, uh, with all that stuff. But anyway... Moving on to one of the games that a lot of people are saying lost their lo- lost its luster a little bit, and that's the Dallas Cowboys against the Philadelphia Eagles. The reason why you lose the luster is because, A, the Eagles seem to have wrapped up the NFC East, and then, B, all of a sudden Jalen Hurts is hurt. So it's like, okay, you know, the Cowboys should go in there and win a game, right, because they've, they've won 10 already this year, so it's not like this is impossible to do and split the season series and all that junk. But what I will say is this. Gardner Minshew is somebody that's going to be under heavy, heavy pressure. And I understand that there's a guy over in Philadelphia who hasn't given up a sack yet this year, Lane Johnson. Yeah, right? He's, he's done very well. Good It'll be a very good matchup on one side. That means the other side. Pay attention to that side. I think Gardner Minshew is going to have to play the same way that other quarterbacks as of late have played, meaning quick release. Get it out fast. You know, these cornerbacks are very susceptible now. We're down a couple guys. The Dallas Cowboys are down a couple guys in the secondary. So that's something. Gardner Minshew is not a play for me this week. Um, It wouldn't be anyway. But if you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, you should have all the confidence in the world. There's a reason why he's still on the roster, right? You don't trade away a Gardner Minshew in the event you're – your your MVP type quarterback gets hurt, um, which happened uh, yeah. twice now to Philadelphia, by the way, after an MVP run, which is crazy to me. Um, but as far as the Cowboys, this he really wrote Dakota Prescott on this thing. He as really, he should. And you're just. I, I understand the guys. I'm it, confused. What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with it. I just know he's making little jabs and quips. If somebody wrote Christopher Gucci. I would have no issue. Yeah, I know, but it's like. I had to change the fact that this did, 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 did say E girls uh, and cowgirls. I, I had to change it. So. Our producer's a Giants fan, in case anybody good. hasn't realized I, I'm that. I'm glad I just bit my tongue. Good for you. Um, <laughs> so look at the, the Eagles' defense has been very good. The Cowboys' defense has historically this year been very good. But, again, your play this week might be a Devonta Smith uh, for the Eagles because of the fact that A.J. Brown and Trayvon Diggs will do some battle. Um, flip side of that coin, Cowboys – Pollard just got named to the Pro Bowl. I'm, I'm sure C.D. Lamb, there was no answer for him last week. He's coming into his own. T.Y. Hilton, a potential little couple catches here and there. If he's active, he was inactive last week. This game's going to come down to, it, it ain't, it ain't going to be some blowout like everybody's predicting because because uh, Hurts is out. This is an NFC East game. It's going to be close. The Cowboys have this outside weird chance to win the NFC East if the Eagles lose out and the Cowboys win out. Cowboys have to have this one this week in order to do so. So I do like a lot of their offensive players. Maybe a sneaky play right here is Dalton Schultz. 
He's come on in the last couple weeks, so th- that's that's my take I got on some, this game. I got some interesting takes on this game, I think. So, one, I think Define there is a very, very slim chance, but still a chance, that Jalen Hurts plays, and I think that would pump up this story. Well, as of right now, as we record this, he has not practiced yet this week. Fair. At all. Um, I don't think he's going to play. The spread would have moved again. That said, <laughs> well, yeah, but there's only two people that – they could be just playing here. They could be like, we know you're not practicing this week, and and like it's tough it's for the Cowboys. They got to prepare for thing. two. I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna give them a go because of this spot that they played themselves into. They could afford to lose this game. I know what that, a luxury. I mean, it's a great know, great I, feeling. That was running last year. You know, they run the risk in some ways of getting a little stagnant, which I understand that's been an issue or a point of topic in in the past with a bunch of other teams. Um, I believe that you sit your starters if you're, you know, you got to sit them. With three weeks left, you sparingly here or there. But what's a series? Bro, think about this, do? though. But think about Look, this: your benching starters with three weeks left with the potential buy too. So that's like five weeks off of off of football. Yeah, absolutely. And you're worried about t- like stagnating and, and, and being rusty. No, I'm not. I'm to- wait. I am. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm, an I'm talking fan. about. I'm, my guys I'm talking right about now. if you're if you're an NFL player, right? And you Which have I'm the, not. the team that you have built over there. You could make the case that they're oh okay, but where did they get hot or cold? Have they run Have they run hot and cold this season yet? No, they had one loss and it was like okay to the guys, legend known as Taylor Heineke. We understand go that's going to go down that way, but they have one loss. They could definitely finish the season with three, and nobody's going to blink if they're fourteen and three in the one seed, going into a, a home game in Philly with their guys fully healthy. And guess what happens in the NFL now, right? You practice against the ones. The Eagles' defense should be providing f- a fair good amount of competition for the Eagles' offense. You're practicing all week together. I don't buy into the you need to play. You need to stay healthy. You know how you stay healthy? By not playing. Um, <laughs> That's science. <laughs> now, for the gardner Minshew thing, I think there's something interesting that we should monitor in this game because if the Eagles go out to an early lead and they, have, they build themselves a nice lead, just – Work with me here. I, I know that would be detrimental to Dave's <laughs> I'm well-being. I'm right here. But It'll be Christmas Eve. If the well, Eagles, if the Eagles jump out to an early lead, there's a very good chance that they're going to sit Jalen Hurts going forward, right? No matter what. There's a chance Correct. that he they can lock play. it all up this week. So I think if they lose the game, Jalen Hurts comes back for the New Orleans game with the potential that he sits out the last one, which that would not be good for the Packers. You know, you know the little other tidbit about that New Orleans game, obviously. Got to have it for the one seed, but they'd be helping their own cause. Oh, of win. course. Look. They're they're completely comfortable with. They got the draft the pick ring. in case anybody. I don't know think. That. Th- I think that they believe they're in the mindset that they could go in and beat the New Orleans Saints right now with their backups. They probably think that way and give these guys some. Saints defense is actually really good. Stop it. They, they are. Have, they're they're about to be the what pick? Because their defense of, is good. Their offense to, stinks. They're about to be the what pick? Like six. They're, they're a bad bad football team. Yeah, right. Through and through. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think Minshew is a good play mid-game if the Eagles have a lead. I also think Minshew, if you didn't get him now yet, it's probably too late, I think, because... He, he, he had a bit of a, a little bit of a spike got ski spike, over the weekend. And now, it, now it's hinging on whether he plays You throw well. a pick, and it's just like... Bah, 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 yeah, now it's hinging <laughs> on whether he plays well on Sunday. And I think that going into this matchup, obviously there's some issues on the uh, Dallas Cowboys front. Um, but A.J. Brown is going to probably eat. Devontae Smith is going to eat. Trayvon Diggs, lock it down. I mean, look. Lock it down. Moving on to the Cincinnati Bengals in New Orleans. New Orleans. Miles, New England. Pay, what? Miles Sanders. All right. Enough of the Miles Sanders. Miles we already Sanders talked is enough my about Miles Sanders for this Cowboys week. have issues stopping the run. That's a true story. So Miles um, Sanders is the guy. <laughs> Mac Jones and Ram Stevenson and all these Patriots who are still hanging in the balance as far as a potential playoff berth need to have this one against one of the red hot teams in the league, not just AFC. The, the Bengals are just having a hard time losing games in December, okay? They're playing very good football. The New England Patriots, to me, are susceptible to a big player, too. Jamar Chase has a day. Joey B has a day. I don't think this is, to be honest with you, this is the nail in the coffin in New England. I think the Patriots get shut down in this game. I'm not making a pick or anything like that, but what I will say is this. Matt Jones and that offense, it, it don't impress me much, okay? Um, it, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. And, and I, I think that the Bengals' defense has been coming on. Their pass rush is coming on. Mac Jones seems to be a little bit of a – how do I say this without getting, like, canceled? He just complains a lot, I guess. You know, like, I don't know, Gen Z, millennial. He just just yells at everybody. 
way too much. You don't get that right this early in your career. You just don't. Um, and I think the Bengals roll in this game. Give me all the Bengals offense. Give me Joey B to have a very, very big game. I'm talking Jamar Chase. I'm talking pretty much everybody involved with Cincinnati this See, week. See, all right. You've always been like this closet supporter of the fact, the idea that the Patriots are good. Well, the Patriots do things well. And when they do things well, they do them exceptionally well. And what they do well, typically, is stop the pass, especially this season. I think that Mixon has an opportunity here. But Joe Burrow, when you look at what Joe Burrow does against man coverage, he lights it up. When you look at what he does against zone coverage, not so much. The Patriots, more often than not, are playing zone. Okay. 70% of the snaps this season were in zone. Um, you could expect almost fully 100% of the snaps to be in zone this game. Because yeah, well, if Burrow, <laughs> if I know that, so. if I know that about Joe Burrow, and I you know that, about I guarantee Joe you, Bill Belichick knows that about Joe Burrow. So you could expect to see some zone. I think Burrow struggles. You like to say Belichick's like a good coach or something. Stop. But what I what I see here is I think it's going to be a, a, a lower scoring game than people think out of this Bengals team. They might have to scrap in this one a little bit, mm -hmm. but. The defense is going to show up as well, and I don't like any of the Patriots in this game. I don't like Ramondre Stevenson. I don't like any of them. I think Stevenson, coming off of a big game, I know that he's still dealing with a small injury issue. And the way the Bengals have been playing of late, stopping the run and just playing complete football, really, both sides of the ball, when they've needed big plays on third downs, they've gotten them. I don't buy into Mac Jones being able to convert, even on third and short against this defense. I know they're missing their pass rusher in Cincy. But guys have stepped Henderson up all year. Out. And DJ Reader is one of the best run stoppers in football. He is. And I and think that's a, a massive addition back. He's been back, but now it's like it's starting to pay major, major dividends for this defense. And um, I'm fading everybody except Joe Mixon in this game. Okay. As much as I'm, I'm going to keep Jamar Chase because I own him. I mean, I am, I'm invested in him. Yes. And things he like that. He should be in your portfolio. And Joe Burrow. To start. I'm not, I'm not selling these guys going into Sunday, but, you know. I don't, have to be I don't patient. anticipate much out of them. And listen, when you have these multipliers on these players, like, yes, unfortunately, if there's a bad game, you will feel it, right? But then that's a that's a hold strong moment where you're like, ah, I'll now, be all right. I will don't say this. It. Disclaimer, it is December. Joe Burrow doesn't – it doesn't matter what you do against It does not December. matter. But fact. he did struggle in games last year that they won. I mean, look, they, had the a, they were down 17 nothing yeah. against the Bucks. You know what I mean? So they had to make a little bit of a comeback ski there, and then and, and, and they did. Um, did you have – the Detroit Lions playing the Carolina Panthers for any significance on your 2022 NFL bingo card? My guess is no, you did not. Um, but Maybe now, if they played week one. Sure, to get the season started off right, on yeah, the right see, foot. You know. But here we are, week 16, it, it's coming to fruition here. All of a sudden, we're looking at a situation and a scenario where the Carolina Panthers are one game behind the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the lead in the NFC North. We're living in a scenario where the Detroit Lions well, could win out. NFC South. That's what I meant. Yes. Uh, the Detroit Lions in the NFC North, aforementioned, um, are in a scenario where they won like five of six or six of seven or whatever the heck they've done. They ripped six in a row. They I were, don't know if it's in a row, but they were one in seven, and they're seven and seven. They won six in a row. They I did. thought they won five. Of yeah, because I said wasn't that there last one week. trip up in the middle. You sure, man? You're going to make me check. Um, but anyway. I mean, they were one in seven. All right, I'm going to check right now, man. I'm bringing it up. I want to make sure I got this right. Um, internet working. Twitter is a liar. <laughs> Twitter is a liar if, it, if this is wrong. If I'm wrong here, I'll be shocked. Uh, well, as soon as the internet kicks back on, I'll do, it. I'll do my research. But what I will say is this. All of a sudden, here we go. There here we go. All right. I'm um, looking at the Lions schedule as of late. Let's see. They beat the Jets. They beat the Vikings. They beat the Jaguars. They lost to the Bills. So there was a loss in between. Lion I ass knew Twitter. It. I knew I was right. Um, I love being right, especially with Mr. Right over here. Um, not in that regard. <laughs> Pause. But anyway, what I will say about this game in Justin particular. Justin Fields moment. <laughs> yes, very good interview. Very good interview. Um, in this moment, I'm going to say that both of these teams are jockeying for a potential position. So when you look at this, both sides of the ball, the Lions offense has been incredible, right? But their defense has been Dog crap, too. So, like, they're in a situation now where they got to go into a shootout. What better recipe than going into a shootout with Sam Darnold and the and the Panthers? So, they're in a situation now where they got to go to Carolina, but at the same time, I don't find this to be that hard of a contest for the Lions. I think a lot of their offensive players roll. I think Jared Goff has a, himself a decent game. Depending on the weather, I know the weather across the NFL this week is going to be wacky, bro. It's supposed to be, like, in the, in the teens 
in like four different locations. So it's going to be cold. It's going to be raw out there. But what I will say is Jared Goff has proven to everybody that he remains there next year. Potentially, you would say that. I made a, a prediction yesterday, uh, two days ago, that potentially hey, Tom Brady to the to the Detroit Lions if they fall short. But, dude, the Lions are playing good. Well, that ain't happening. They're, they're scra- what? That's not going to happen. We I know, know that. I'm well aware. They're being scrappy <laughs> right now. And uh, when you look at the Panthers, it's susceptible to the pass. Give me Amon Ross St. Brown. Give me those young, hungry Lions uh, to succeed in this one. I look at the Panthers, and I just think they fell into a scenario where they're playing good football, right? Not great football. And the Bucs are just tripping over their own feet. So that's why I look at the Panthers as a potential like, oh, they're right there. But I don't foresee it happening. Yeah, I mean, the Lions are playing real good football right now. The Panthers are playing better, as Dave pointed out, and Sam Darnold's 2-0 and this season, and he does have a three-game win streak under his belt in his NFL career up to this point. Hmm. Started the season last year at 3-0. and I think it comes to an end here, though, and I like I like his chances at re-signing with Carolina. I spoke about that yesterday, so maybe there is some, some value in a Sam Darnold, but... The Lions are going to do what they want offensively in this game. They've been lighting up everybody. Mm. Uh, I think this could be the game where we maybe see a little bit more out of Jamison Williams. I know we've been waiting for it. Uh, he scored already. He, he did score, but he hasn't gotten a lot of usage in terms of... I mean, you got to be worried about like his his health at of this course, point. Of course, bring him along that- slow. But now it's not like the Lions aren't in a position where they could use another game changer out on the offense. <laughs> 100%. So it could be where he comes into his zone at the perfect time. The Lions are a scary team if they sneak in. Nobody wants to play that team right now. Um, look, for almost 400 yards of total offense, and their defense is playing better. The best part about the Lions is that while they hide a lot of inefficiencies on their entire team with the fact that they protect the quarterback and they pass block and they and they run block well, so there's a lot to be liked about that offense. I like all their players. I'm buying in on Goff because I feel like the vote of confidence that he got from Dan Campbell was huge, and we could kind of put everything to rest. This team is playing playoff football. They may even make a run, dare I say. So there's no reason why we should be out on golf. Definitely not Tom Brady's job to win. Can you imagine, um, though? Like, we live in a world right now where if they squeak in as the seventh seed and the Minnesota Vikings kind of tread water and they remain the second, all of a sudden your first-round matchup is Detroit at Minnesota. I'm just like, I'm all over Detroit in that game. Yeah, I am, too. They played crazy they played seven fairly dominant quarters against minnesota this season right yeah right um really almost eight and then the second half of the fourth quarter in the first game went went south for detroit but Mm. um i do like dj Moore here i still because detroit's off uh, defense leaves a little bit to be desired they are playing better um but they give up a lot of big plays as well so dante foreman potential because he's low value but really my buy here would be dj Moore. okay Wrapping up our coverage of Week 16 is another game that, again, the Chiefs looking to try to get that one seed, so they got to keep playing as hard as possible, right? And then you got the Seattle Seahawks, who cannot afford to lose another game, or this season's up in smoke. Now, look, you look at the Seattle Seahawks. Again, I had the Seahawks and the Bears. I've said this plenty of times. Seahawks and the Bears, I had 1-2 of next year's draft. I said the Seahawks would be abysmal. How can you go with Geno Smith over Drew Locke? Right? I was just like, I was a Drew Locke guy. Don't ask me why. Um, Maybe his is just... Moxie? I don't know. Not skill, that's for sure. But Geno Smith has had himself a year, man. And now with the with the season pretty much on the line, Geno Smith against Patrick Mahomes. Again, bingo cards are getting full here, folks. I don't know if anybody had this matchup at the end of the year to mean anything, but it means a lot. The Seattle Seahawks are holding out for dear life. He's had himself a year. 3,600 yards to 26 touchdowns, eight picks. Geno Smith has had himself an absolutely good year. Kenneth Walker has almost, outside of getting hurt for a couple weeks, this dude was on pace, and he could still be on pace to win Rookie of the Year. I No? Where is that going? There's a lot of receivers out there right now that are doing real good. Yeah. Garrett Wilson, for, for starters. Truth. Okay. Olave. I mean, he was on he was on a decent pace, right? Yeah. He gets banged up a little bit. That's what happens. I mean, Jalen Hurts was supposed to win MVP, but now if you miss the last three, mm, it might be bleak. Um, but anyway, to this game, Seattle does a lot of things well on offense. Their defense is still – there was a spurt where they were doing well um, against – I guess both the pass and the run. But I do like a little Pacheco this week. I do like Patrick Mahomes to kind of throw that ball around. I just think Matt, Patrick Mahomes is going to demand a brand new shiny toy next year. I don't know in what regard, either be a rookie or they bring in a free agent or whatever the case. It seems to me that Patrick Mahomes is still having a problem looking outside of Travis Kelsey's window. You know what I mean? Like 
Outside of that, it's Juju. It's it's MVS. I mean, I, I think that no matter who you insert in there, they have playmakers. There's so many weapons on the Chiefs, and I know that maybe, McKinnon has been a guy. Yeah, McKinnon is the guy that I'm involved with right now. Okay. No question about it. Because Pacheco, right. yeah, and but I think right now what we're seeing out of McKinnon is he's playing such good, best football of his career, and he's a vet. Right, he understands what it takes to get it done, and because he catches the ball like he does out of the backfield, that's what I'm looking for out of this Chiefs team because. You know they create such good spacing with their with their route trees and things like that. That when you get the ball underneath, think about Kareem Hunt, how many receiving touchdowns he busted for like 80 yards. They screen people to death. Andy Reid loves throwing to his running backs. Think about the Eagles teams where they always had somebody that they threw yeah, the ball to out of the backfield. True. Right now, that's Jarek McKinnon, and it's Pat Mahomes, not Donovan McNabb. And this Chiefs team has weapons on weapons nobody we're in on kelsey suit. we're in on kelsey already we all know that uh, we're already in on Mahomes because how could you not be um but really it's mckinnon for me uh i was in and i've been in and out on pacheco but it's been now my new i shifted my pacheco money over to jarek mckinnon because it just makes sense he's the guy that i think people are undervaluing still and gino is going to probably do well in this game but it's going to be in a losing effort and I don't think he's going to really see much of an uptick. I think everybody kind of understands. And when I say everybody, I mean the mojo market understands that Gino probably played himself into a contract. So whether he plays exceptionally well outside of like a three, four touchdown game win on the road, I don't I don't think Gino is going to go up much. But Gino is a long play for you. But Gino is yeah. a long play for me because when he does get that contract in the offseason, I believe that there's going to be some value there, and he's definitely going to get it. It's a shame that Kenneth Walker fell off a little bit because we were touting him as the potential league but, winner in fantasy. But now he can potentially lead the league in rushing next year. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. he's got and that, it, that. The talent. wheels came off on the Seattle season, and it's not it's not a surprise to me. They were playing good football, but I'm here for it because it opens the door for the Packers to get in. But I'm not in on any of the Seahawks offensive players this this week. Okay, none. I see a shootout, so we'll see what happens. Um, that'll yeah. do it for our coverage Good of Week luck 16. Good in a shootout. And Again, like, yes, you don't want to shoot them out, but still, it could be a thing. This is what I'm saying, though. I think based on the fact that the Chiefs' defense isn't good, we're expecting some points out of Seattle, and mm. we're expecting some yards. So it's like unless they exceed the market expectation, I'm not buying in on it. And I think the market, if you look at the, to uh, the total in this game, it's pretty high. Yeah. So they're going to have to really exceed the expectation we with a win on the road. See, but what that you will happen? <laughs> what you could do right now is an early Christmas gift to Mojo. You can follow us right now on all the social media. You got TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us at Mojo M O J O. Very simple, four letters, not hard to find. Find us on Discord. Talk to us throughout the weekend. Tell us who you're going long on. Tell us who you're shorting. All the strategies, put them out there in the universe so people can pick up and either tail you or fade you or whatever. Invest smart. Do it. Do it safely over the weekend. Don't spend all your money that you get for Christmas. But in fact, speaking of Christmas, Merry Christmas to you, Chris. A5. Everybody at home, ho, enjoy. Ho, <laughs> enjoy your Christmas. Ho. Please be sure to be safe. Enjoy the eggnog. We'll see you guys back here on Monday morning for another episode of the Mojo Market Report. Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci, A5. We'll see you guys on Monday. Merry Christmas, everybody. The shitter is full, Clark. <laughs>